I'm sad, guys. You know why I'm sad? Because EA broke Madden. Again. Now, your guess is as good as mine at this point, right? Seems like every day we're liable to have an update. Every day we're liable to have a new issue. Whether it's content not coming out at the right time. Whether it's a bug in the game. Whether it's something just completely random that just decided to stop working today. It's another day. It's another issue. So, unfortunately, we have to talk about it. But, hey, before that, if you are new to the channel and you always want to stay up to date with the happenings in Madden, the updates, or lately, the problems... Make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell icon so that you never miss any of these important uploads when they go live. You know, I feel like I've just been talking really bad about Madden lately, but it's kind of like I, just, I really have no choice because there's this has been like the most issues I've seen at the beginning of a Madden. And we've seen some issues. <laughs> we've seen some issues with Madden, but this year it's unprecedented, right? I haven't really been this negative about Madden since Madden 19 I made a lot of negative videos that year because I really didn't like the game the game had a lot of issues probably my least favorite Madden last year yeah last year had some issues as well but I had a lot of fun on the game last year and truth be told you know I'm still having a lot of fun on Madden 21 but the, your fun on Madden 21 is very dependent on things that are out of your control are you running into the bugs as much as other people what modes do you play right if you play franchise you're probably not enjoying it at all if you play ultimate team you're probably enjoying it a little bit better even though content has been dry if you just play regular online head-to-head -head and you just like to compete yeah you might be okay with it it just kind of depends where you're at with the game but yesterday we got a big update the biggest update so far of the year there were a lot of things in it I didn't like there were actually some good things that were kind of snuck in there too that they didn't list that I'm going to go over in the video there was definitely some good changes in that update but the biggest thing that happened where they broke the game was this new bug where wide open passes are just being dropped at a ridiculous rate now and it's an actual bug they actually did speak on it very briefly on their morning stream they said that they are aware of the catch bug they're already working on it they're trying to get a fix out as quickly as possible and that they will kind of address it more tomorrow uh so at least they finally acknowledge it because they didn't say anything up until that point but there is a bug if you're not familiar with it i'm going to show you a few clips uh i got a clip from gut fox on his channel and uh my guy problem kind of had a little montage of clips that were submitted to him so i'm going to show you a few of these clips i'll play them i'm gonna have their channels linked below in the description two buddies two good content creators so go check them out after this video but if you're not familiar here's what's going on currently there you go boys that's post patch Madden 21. That's the receiver. And then not only does he drop the ball, but he goes back and tries to block. Like, are you like what are what are you actually doing? This is just not something we've seen in practice mode. We don't really see drops like this. So to see them in all of our modes, it's just awful. This is a CFM mode. This is franchise right here. Moving right, throwing to a wide open receiver and dropping the ball. He's gonna throw the corner route though. Corner route, triangle, wide open. Let me go ahead and possession catch this. Nope, not today, buddy. All right, and this is uh, solo right here. This is on arcade mode. Just take notes. Again, this is across all modes. Wide open streak. Again, I have never seen, I haven't seen this in solos. I want to give a huge shout out to Hawthorne for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you don't know what Hawthorne is, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to clue you guys in. They are a premium tailored cologne brand for men, but not just cologne. They have shampoo, face wash, body wash. And what's great about their products is that they tailor them specifically to you and your needs. Now, you're probably asking, Eric, well, how do they do that? Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you. You go on their website. You take this brief quiz. takes a few minutes. Very, very quick and simple. It asks you very specific questions, and it's going to tailor each of these products exactly to you now two of the great things that come with your order is you're gonna get these two specific colognes one for work kind of daytime one for play one for nighttime this bad boy right here I use this every single day I work from home uh, but I, every morning take my shower boom 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 I spray it up you know if I'm going to run errands this right here my daily cologne and use it every day love it but I also have a ton of their other products like their body wash their face wash I've been using it for a few months now since they sponsored an older video and I've been loving it ever since I'm about to re-up soon because I am about to run out. It has worked wonders for me, way better than anything I have gotten over the counter over the last few years. So if you want to try it out for yourself, you can use my code ERIC10 to get 10% off of your order. The link will be below. Again, that is ERIC10 for 10% off of your order. Anybody that knows anything about coding, we get it. When you change code, when you mess around with code, you likely are going to break something you didn't intend to break. Even if you just go to like a basic grade school level, like HTML basic, right? If you mess with code, you know you're going to probably break something or mess something up. That's really not the issue 
I think for me and a lot of people, we know that, hey, when you're messing with the game, it's going to have other consequences, other places. The problem is that it gets out, that some of these obvious things make it past the testing stage, the quality control or whatever, the, the, the QR, right? Because if you played this game for even an hour, you would have seen a few drops. You would have had to see it. Same thing in Madden 19. If you played it for a little bit, you would have seen that fall forward bug. I'm not so mad when those random bugs that like it's impossible to catch until millions of people play it and one person stumbles upon it. I'm not mad at stuff like that because that happens to every game. You can't do nothing about that. But something like this that you can literally spot right away. Like, I don't know how long they test the patches. I know that the team probably isn't big. It usually isn't for a lot of games, at least in terms of what I've understood. So it's obviously there's difference between having a few people play a game and having millions of people play it. But something like this bug would easily be caught, right? I would, I feel like if you're going to put a patch out, you got to at least have a couple days of just a few people just doing nothing but playing games over and over and over and just trying to find anything that could be wrong. Two days, right? If you played this game for an hour or two, there's no way you wouldn't have said, hmm, seen a lot of wide open passes get dropped this isn't right catch it and then delay the patch or the update so that we don't have to deal with it because now we're gonna have to play this game for probably at least a couple weeks with drop passes and it's just you know it's one of those things that i'm not gonna say it makes the game completely unplayable because i'll be honest i played a lot yesterday trying to just see i didn't really have any drop passes i had some in practice mode not in game but i've watched other people play definitely seeing i would say on average like maybe three drop passes a game per team right some games you don't have any but then other games you might have three four five like it's just kind of random right hasn't really affected me so much yet but it's clearly an issue right and now we have to deal with this for weeks it's the same thing with the chew clock glitch that 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 you know just got fixed yesterday and it doesn't even seem like they completely fixed that either because i'm still seeing some chew clock happening it's just not nearly as egregious as it was you know, that's something that you would literally catch the first game you play. There's no way that should have, like, that's why I almost think it was intentional. A lot of people think the chew clock bug was an intentional thing because there's no way you play for a quarter and you notice that anybody that's played the game. So there's no way that could have just accidentally got out. Either they knew it was a thing and they're like, oh, we'll just fix it post patch, which to me is awful. Or they intended it, which is also awful, right? Certain things like that just shouldn't make it past the testing stage. And that's why I'm like, do you have to bring in some people from the community to test? Maybe that would be a better option. I don't know. But aside from that, let's talk about another issue that I that I had with the patch. Two things. One, the new abilities, uh, the pass commit and run commit abilities, where if you get these abilities on players and you pass commit or run commit with them and you guess right, they're literally going to blow up the play. That shouldn't be an ability. That should just be a stock thing in the game because it's already a mechanic, a mechanic that has not worked for years you can't band-aid gameplay mechanics and say, well, we put an ability in. They've been doing that for years. Even before abilities were a thing in Ultimate Team, you had like, like these, you had abilities in Ultimate Team for years. They were just a little different than the like game-wide abilities you have now. Um, but it was the same thing, you know, when people couldn't, were getting faked out by defenders. They were like, oh, we're going to put unfakeable in the game and now you won't get faked out. Like, no, just make things work properly. I like abilities, but not when you're going to use them as a band-aid for problems. Now, these abilities aren't in the regular game yet. I think they're only in CFM, uh, but you have to expect they're going to come to the regular game soon, and, and that's not going to be good. Like, I don't like that. The next thing that they did that really aggravates me, and I'm going to actually go to practice mode real quickly, but then I'm going to talk about some good things. I, I want to talk about the good as well, but they changed the QB slide, which I said was awful when I read it, and after playing, it's even more awful. So here we are in practice mode. Now, to slide with your QB now, you have to tap the X or square button, um, X on Xbox, square on PlayStation twice. You gotta go boom, boom to slide. Before, you just had to press it once, and it worked beautifully. If anything, on the other side, right, when you have a regular ball carrier, you have to, if you wanna go down and give yourself up to like avoid a hit stick, maybe late in the game, you don't wanna fumble, you had to double tap the X or square. And that was already like an issue all year because like they changed the timing on it. It used to be like really quick. You had to go like boom, boom, like really quick to do it. Now it's more like boom, boom. And what happens is on that first tap, your guy lunges forward almost like he's going to dive because if you just tap it once, you're going to dive. And nobody ever wants to dive with their player because it results in fumbles almost every time. So the problem with the new like go down and slide mechanic is you lunge forward briefly and then you either go down or slide. But the slide mechanic before this wasn't like that. You actually could tap it once and he would immediately go into a slide. 
That's what you want from your QB. You want it. Sliding should be the easiest thing in the game. And now they've made it more complicated. And I've been seeing people dive and fumble all day yesterday. And it's like, these are things that nobody needs uh, even asked for that, right? The one thing you can do that infuriates gamers is just changing buttons for no reason. If they work, you don't need to change it. And now I'm going to show you like, yes, I have the timing down. So it's kind of hard for me to mess it up. But I want you to watch, like, I'm going to go to the replay. Now, I was able to slide there because I timed it right. But I want to show you the replay, and I want to show you, like, issues that happen with this, right? Because watch Lamar Jackson. Watch, like, as I'm going to slide. Watch. You see you see how he goes to lunge forward? It looks like he's about to dive. And then, then the second tap registers, and he's like, okay, I'm going to slide. That's stupid. Before, I could just tap it once, and he would just slide. Because what happens now, a lot of times, is even if you time it right, if you're too close to a defender, right here, I got lucky. But what happens a lot of times, because this game is so animation-based and suction tackles happen, right here, a lot of times, this defender will get a tackle animation before I can hit the second button and get to the slide. And then they collide. And you know that QBs fumble a lot in this game when they just get breathed on. So... This is a horrible fix because now even when you're intending to slide because he dives forward first a lot of times he gets hit or a lot of times if you just time it a little bit wrong like if you time it the slightest bit wrong then you wind up doing this you start diving luckily we didn't fumble there but you start diving it's just like dive and slide shouldn't be this complicated it should literally be how it used to be for the QB one tap is a slide hold is a dive like it's literally the simplest way tap slide hold dive should be the same way for the ball carrier tap it you go down hold it you dive how hard is that now it's like no you got to put in a code you got to like boom boom you got to time it so perfectly and even if you do that because he goes to dive first he gets hit a lot of times by defenders nobody that's trying to go down in like any type of real football scenario is doing this first they're just going down immediately. They're sliding. You've never seen a player do this and then slide or do this and then go down. Like, it's just things like that are what make it like, what are you doing? Like, who thought this was the right idea? I just, I don't like to be that negative, but it's just, it's just so simple to do it the right way. I feel like, and they like, they choose like the worst way possible to implement it. Now, I will say, outside of that, this was actually a really good patch outside of that, but it, you can't really call it a good patch because the problems are so much worse than the good parts. You know, the, the things we wanted fixed, chew clock, the kick meter, right? You know, people in franchise, formation subs. We wanted that stuff fixed. Like, fix the issues without breaking other things that are obvious. The obvious things that get broken, like this catch bug, should never make it past testing, in my opinion, because it's so obvious if you play the game for just a little bit. Like I said, if it's something completely random, I get that, because you will... You could play the game for a week and maybe never see it because you're just a few people playing it, right? It could be that rare and random. But something that happens literally like the first game you play, there's no way you should miss that, right? And then, you know, just making the changes like the slide. Like, it's just, it's, un, it's like, you know what I like to call this? It's like, I heard this, this, uh this analogy once it's like it's moving furniture for no reason like i'm just gonna move furniture around like it was it was already good but i just want to move it around like that's what the, a lot of times these game companies do they're just like oh, i just want to change the button for what it was fine why are you changing it why are you now making it more difficult for people which is going to give them a worse experience on your game right outside of that though they did fix a lot of issues that the game had so now but now they got to double back chase their tail again and fix these issues another thing they put in the game that was brought to my attention that has been asked about for a long time is they finally brought back the compare stats at least for regular online head-to-head -head. Uh, i don't think you can compare against friends but you can compare against at least i think the last person you played i've been having that comment for years and uh they, they finally did bring that back so you can compare stats now so I, you know things like that are great add things back to the game put things that we want fix the, the the glaring issues but if you can't do it without breaking other things or just changing things that don't need to be changed you're not going to get good feedback or positivity from the community because you're even though you're doing good you're also making a lot of people mad at the same time so uh that's it for today just wanted to follow up on the patch a little bit um Gonna have more content coming tomorrow and Friday. Got a roster update coming at the end of the week. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Bell icon on. I will see you guys next time.